Uh, hi everyone. Uh, today I will uh, walk through the steps that is needed to install OpenStack IceHouse uh, using DevStack. So I will cover both the uh, single node installation as well as the uh, multi node installation. I have also uh, written blog associated with this. Uh, so in this I will kind of walk through the steps that I have uh, written in the blog. Um, I have also uh, created a couple of OVA instances uh, which you can you know download to your uh, you know, virtual box or uh, VMware kind of a software uh, where you can run the VMs. And here I have uh, created the steps that I did to uh, uh, install, uh, you know, get this VM up before I created the OVA file. When you, if you are going to use the OVAs that are specified in these links, you don't need to you now walk through these uh, steps here. Um, okay, so this is my uh, virtual box software. So here I have you know a whole bunch of VMs, and uh, these are the two VMs that uh, the two OVA files that I've already imported. Uh, so one thing I kind of forgot to mention is uh, my uh, environment. So my environment is Windows 7 with this virtual box software version 4.3.10 and I have a 12 GB RAM. It's important to have uh, at least what I observed in my single uh, node instance, it's at least needed to have you know 8 GB RAM and if you are running you know two instances uh, controller on a computer instance, I think you need at least around uh, 10 GB of RAM. Uh, okay, so I already imported the two OVA files. So First is we'll first start the controller instance. Um, so I have used Ubuntu 12.04 uh, for this uh, installation. So let's wait for the, uh, the system to boot up. Okay, the system is uh, booted up now. Uh, so let's look at the networking configuration here. So uh, in my virtual box. Let me just go to the settings of the network. Uh, I have two uh, network interfaces. One is a NAT interface, and another is a host only interface. And that's the uh, this is the you know the NAT interface address, and this is the host only interface address. And This local RC file uh, customized it for what we need. The uh, important things I would say here are what is the credentials, the username and password are open stack, uh, and uh, the branch we are using is the ISOS branch. So, here, so this is the only thing that you need to edit in this particular file. Uh, so, just use the address associated with your host only interface and uh, just update that here. Uh, because this is got through DHCP, so it will be different different address for uh, your purpose. And from a services perspective, uh, you know the main thing that you know, we need to uh, keep in mind is the no one network is disabled, the neutron is enabled. Um, and the other thing, important thing is I have uh, you know set up this scheduler as, as a chance scheduler. So basically, this is important when we have. Uh, multiple uh, compute instances and how the VMs get load balanced between uh, the different hypervisors. So here, to start with, we'll just use one node, and just in this particular node, and this node has both the controller, it will run the control controller as well as the compute instance together. Uh, so what we we'll do is first pull the dev stack and let's stack it. So this will take at least two to three minutes. Okay, we are back. So uh, 
uh, basically the stacking got completed now. Uh, so you see that uh, it took around 188 seconds for the stacking to complete. Uh, this gives the username and the password, and this is the host IP. Uh, so when this is done, what we could do is um, go to the start directory. There's a script that is created which allows us to run a bunch of Nova related commands. So just uh, run this script, and we can look at the uh, hypervisor list. Basically, this is the OpenStack virtual box, and that is my host name here. Um, so that is one of the hypervisors that is currently available. That is, and that is the only uh, that is the only hypervisor that is available. And let's see the VMs. Obviously, there's no VMs that are currently running. At this point, what we can do is launch the uh, Horizon. Um, I'm doing this from my host machine. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention was I have also done um, a uh, NAT rule here. So if I go to my settings here, uh, to allow my local browser. So I set a port forwarding rule here uh, to match the guest port to my host port. So, so that's why I'm using my local browser host machine and then I will log into the uh, uh, 101 address and this should launch the, uh, the horizon interface. So here we log in and again, open stack, sign up. Right, here we are. So we have the, uh, we have logged into the uh, horizon uh, interface. Um, so a couple of uh, interesting things here or let's just let's look at the hypervisors. We see the, uh, you know, the OpenStack virtual box hypervisors with four vCPUs, uh, three GB RAM. Um, then other thing we can look at the instances. Currently, there are no instances running. Uh, we can look at the images. There are three images that are you know, present by default. Look at networks. There are uh, there's a private and a public network. Private network with this subnet and public network. One nice thing. We can see that the network is a network topology here. Uh, so, by default, a private network in the 10.0 subnet in the public network is uh, created by default, and these are connected to the uh, router. Uh, so, let's go to compute instances. Uh, currently, there are no instances running. So, what we'll do first is let's create a bunch of instances. Default manual instance, file instances. Uh, use the boot from each option is the zeros option. Uh, let's use the default security groups for now. Networking, it's using the private network. Let's leave that as it is. Uh, let's click on start. Launch here. So now this is going to create five instances. Uh, and um, yeah, and then the IP address that is going to be bought from the DHCP server and the controller, so that's what it's shown here. Uh, still, the VMs are spawning. In the meantime, what we do is go to the network. Let's look at the network topology here. Now we've seen the five instances here. Um, so let's go back to the compute instances. Uh, okay, now we see all the instances running. First, what we will do is uh, let's pick one of the instances, 10.0.0.2 instance. Uh, so here we can see the overview, which is the security groups, the addresses, and everything. Uh, we go to the console. So this allows us to log in this particular VM, and the username is zeros and the password is cut to them. So 
version now. So, like item dot zero dot zero dot two address. The next thing we can at the moment uh, now logged into the system. So let's go to the yeah, controller. So I see the five VMs are running. Uh, and let's try to extend IBM. So not able to ping here. Um, so these I'm not able to ping is because the current default security group does not allow any external access. So to do that, set up the external access, let's go back and let's go to the access and security here. Uh, so default security group is it's already present. What we manage the rules here. There are a bunch of rules here. Uh, let's add a rule. And this is all ICMP ingress. So basically, we allow all ICMP access. So let's add that rule. Uh, this allows for ping to work. So let's just make sure that it's still now it's working. All right. So ping is working fine now. That and uh, okay, let me now try to do SSH uh, to uh, 10.0.0.2. And obviously, this is not going to work because that is not available to allow the TCP traffic. So, let's go back to the let's add one more rule. Is uh, or ECP and here okay, now let's go back to the uh, SSH to my VM so I can see my 10.0.0.2 address. And I am able to get inside my VM. Back to this. And uh, if I go to my admin, I will see uh, my instances here. Um, the different instances that we just created. So, So at the end of this combination, let's go check that uh, the WSM, I'm not even able to reach my instance here because my VMs are going to be there. So let's um, make sure that. Yeah. 